This Pathé newsreel from 1940s simply titled Mitchum Bombed. The description doesn't say when exactly it was filmed, although it guesses October 1940, which was the beginning of the London Blitz. There's also no description as to where the locations are. There's no commentary with this newsreel, and it was never shown publicly at the time. I think there are three separate locations in this video clip, and I'm going to try and identify the locations of each. Starting with this one, the scenes here run for about 20 seconds, so let's watch the whole thing first. One or two houses in this terrace destroyed. And then we go on to a church, which is the second location. So let's go back to the beginning. There's no real clue as to where this is, other than the building itself which looks to be a three-story building. Position of the cameraman suggests this is the ground floor. This is the first floor. Note the bookcase, fire, fireplace, paintings on the wall, photos. And there's a balcony here with railings. And then above, looks like another room. Is this three stories? We go back to something like 10 seconds. It shows the building from a bit further away. We can see that this top floor is contained within the roof structure. Sort of thing that's similar to a mansard roof. Sort of thing you might see in France, in Paris perhaps. Let's have a look at Wikipedia. This is the kind of thing I was thinking of. Quite a common layout in France, in Paris. That looks like the roof line, but there is in fact another floor on the top with these dorm windows. Can we say that here? Well, we can see that there is a room within the confines of the roof. There's a fireplace underneath the chimney stacks. Now, there are not many places in Mitcham that were built like this. In terms of three-storey buildings, there are a few. You could think of the Barclays Bank building on the corner of Lower Green West and London Road, but that is not this type of structure. I was thinking, perhaps, the Tooting End of Figs Marsh. Let's have a look at Google Maps. I have in mind this block here. I've researched this before, but let's have a quick look at what it looks like using Street View. So this is the corner of Crusoe Road and London Road. This is the block I'm thinking of. So we can see it has a balcony, railings. There are dormer windows. That is that is a men's hard roof design. The initial problem I have with this concept, this possibility, is this overhanging section here. We go back to the first clip. There is no overhanging section. I have researched this before and it was a part, these houses were a part of a terrace called Sibthorpe 
villas or Sibfort Terrace that were built at the beginning of the 20th century, in the first decade of the 20th century. There's no record of it. There's, it doesn't appear on the 1897 Orton Survey map, but it does appear on the 1910 map. But let's have a look at this 1934 map. There's Figs Marsh. So we're looking towards Tooting at the top. Swains Road, Pitcairn Road, Crusoe Road. That's where we were just now with the street view. Now let's look at the 1949 view. And here we see there is no terrace on the corner of Pitcairn on London Road or between Swains Road and Pitcairn Road. And there's a fair amount of Pitcairn Road itself missing. Now Merton Memories have got some photographs of bomb damage to Pitcairn Road. And this entry on the Merton Memories site says this is one of a number of houses demolished by a bomb in Pitcairn Road. The exact date of the bombing hasn't been ascertained, but the damage was probably caused by a high explosive bomb that fell on number 9 Pitcairn Road in late September 1940. So, if this is Pitcairn Road here, and this is where number 9 was, could that wall be similar to our wall there, but further down there? Another photograph on most of memories of the damage to the road. These are houses in Pitcairn Road. Now, in addition, there's another image on most of memories of a garage in the London Road, P&O Motors. I'm not an expert, but this doesn't look like a direct hit because the cars are intact. This looks like an explosion nearby which has pulled off the roof and the superstructure of the building and the Merton memory site refers to this as number 66 London Road so if we go back to our map from 1949 there's the garage which Merton Mary says it's number 66. Here's the hutments that have been put in place for housing the homeless, and this part of the terrace is gone. So, what I've done is I've copied the outline of each house and moved it across to this view to show you where the numbers were. So, that carriage is 66. 68, 70, 72, 74, 76, Pitcairn Road, 78, 80, 82. So the theory is that this is either number 76 or perhaps 74 and 76. As the Merton Memory Site said, number 9, Pitcairn Road, which would have been right about here, received the hit. So the blast radius, the blast radius has taken out these buildings. But because the Pathé Newsreel was showing us with, this is London Roadside because that's where the balconies are facing Figs Marsh. The building that's been destroyed here may be number 76 or maybe number 74 or all three so the next thing to do is to look at the list of civilian deaths for World War II and that's available on Ancestry which is in alphabetical sequence by surname. So some time ago, I took this list and put the information into a spreadsheet so I could sort it. And here we have 25th September 1940, a 
at number 76 London Road. And number 9 Pitcairn Road, at number 17 Swains Road. And that name, John Charles Winborn, was what was referred to in the memories reference. Here. So it's looking likely then that the high explosive bomb landed here. And going back to the spreadsheet, it looks like at number 76, a whole family was killed. Arthur Pembroke, age 29. Chrissy Constance Kathleen Pembroke, age 27. Jean Margaret Pembroke, age 5. And Terence Arthur Pembroke, age 4. So it could be that one. But what about the problem about the lack of the cover over the balcony? Well, let's go back to Google Maps again. And this time, let's have a look at the end of the currently current existing terrace, because there's a clue there. So there's Fixed Marsh. That block of flats was built where part of the terrace was destroyed and demolished. These houses were built where that part of the terrace was destroyed. And now we can see the profile of the end of the Sibfort Villas, the Sibfort Terrace. And I think the solution to my problem about the lack of a canopy is that the layout of the building appears to be shown here. And this part, we might have been added on after. And so it's possible that that destruction that we saw against the garage, where the roof had been blown off, also incurred damage across the remaining terrace and the roof and the roofs had to be replaced and so perhaps it was decided to extend the space available in those upper rooms by bringing it out and providing a canopy over the balcony area and that's just a theory but it's possible Thank you for watching. Please press the like button if you did like this video. If you didn't like this video, press the dislike button. And leave a comment and tell me why you didn't like this video. It would be nice to know. Consider subscribing. There will be two more videos in this series about this particular Pathé Newsreel. And there are two more locations to investigate. Bye for now. Oh, and sorry about the background noise, I've got the window open, you can hear the trams going past.